So the continuity equation is based on a conservation of mass principle. And we can use it to calculate uh, areas, okay, and uh, volumes. And in cardiology, we um, can calculate things like the aortic valve area, the mitral valve area, uh, regurgitant volume across any of the valves, really. Um, the, 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 the principle states that if you have a closed circuit, so you have to have a closed circuit. If you have a narrowing uh, in any area, um, you can, and if you know the orifice of the, the, the area that's not narrowed, then you can calculate the area of the narrowed, uh, 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 the area of the narrowed segment. S sim simply put it, okay, so if you have a tube like this and it's closed, there is no leak, the flow here is gonna be the same as the flow at this restricted area. Prior to, to doing the, uh, the continuity equation, we talked about flow. And flow is equal to the cross-sectional area times uh, velocity or time velocity integral. Uh, okay, so if you want to get the flow at say this uh, uh, at this orifice, okay, the flow at say through this tube. All you need to do is get the area, the cross-sectional area right here, and the velocity. Okay, if it's a closed system, it's going to be the same flow through this restricted area. Okay, and the flow at this restricted area is equal to the cross-sectional area times the velocity. So, you, you know, when you look at it, you can say, well, since the flow is going to be the same, then, and this area is reduced, then the velocity is going to be higher. So that's the only difference. If you have, if it's a closed system, then if you have a narrowing, then the velocity at the narrowed area is going to be greater because the flow is supposed to be the same. The flow is going to be the same. Again, flow is equal to cross-sectional area times velocity. Okay, and. Uh, so if, if, if you use the time velocity integral, you can see that for this larger area, the time velocity integral or velocity is less. And for this smaller area, you can see that the time velocity integral or velocity is greater because the product of area times time velocity integral is the same anywhere along the, uh, the, the, the tube, okay? So, that's basically the, the continuity equation. The flow along any area in a closed circuit is going to be the same. So we use that principle to calculate the aortic valve area. And what we do when we calculate the aortic valve area, we use the flow across the left ventricular flow track and the flow across the aortic valve. Since the flow at both points are going to be the same, if this is the flow uh, across the left ventricular flow track, and this is the flow across the aortic valve, we usually, if the aortic valve is stenosed, narrowed, we usually don't know the area and we need to calculate the area. So if this is the flow across the left ventricular flow track, again, flow is equal to the area times the time velocity integral. So this would be the area of the left ventricular flow track. And if we look at the left ventricular flow track, it, it, it looks circular. So the area of a circle is pi r square, and I showed you how to simplify that. Okay. And then if you multiply it by the time velocity integral across the left ventricular flow track, you get the flow. And then the flow across the aortic valve is equal to aortic valve area times the time velocity integral across the aortic valve. But this time you're going to have to use continuous wave Doppler because the time velocity integral is going to be much, it's going to be, or the velocity is going to be very large. So you're going to have to use uh, the C Doppler. Okay? So once you rearrange the equation, 
then you can see the aortic valve area is equal to the area across the left ventricular flow tract times the TVI across the left ventricular flow tract divided by the TVI across the aortic valve. So this is the continuity equation. And we can also use the continuity equation. So, so try and understand it fully, okay? Um, if you remember earlier, when we simplify flow, say stroke volume, Again, stroke volume is the volume of blood that the, 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 the ventricle pumps out per beat. And the stroke volume, uh, so we usually look at the volume flowing across the left ventricular flow tract. And if we use that, then the stroke volume is 0 0.785 times D squared, where D is the diameter of the left ventricular flow tract. Square it times the TVI across the left ventricle flow track. Okay, so you have to remember that. Now, we, we, we're going to look at uh, regurgitation. And say let, let's use, say, mitral regurgitation. When you have mitral regurgitation, you have blood flowing from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium in systole. Okay, so what's going to happen? The left atrium is going to have more blood than it would normally contain because of this re re regurgitation, right? So you know that the left atrium is usually filled when blood flows from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium to fill the uh, left atrium but it's going to get an additional it's going to get an additional amount of blood because of the regurgitation so what you're going to have into the left atrium now is the regular amount of blood plus the regurgitant blood that flow backwards into the left atrium so in diastole when the mitral valve opens Blood is going to flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle, but it's going to contain the usual amount of blood plus the regurgitant volume. We can determine the severity of regurgitation, and we're looking at mitral regurgitation, by the amount of blood that's, that's going back into the left atrium. Okay? So if you have a little bit of blood going into the left atrium, we can... For argument's sake, we can say it's mild mitral regurgitation. If you have much, if if you have more blood going backwards, we can say it's moderate. And if you have torrential amount of blood going backward, we can call it severe. But it, it, it's always good to have some objective data to to define mild, moderate, and severe. We know the greater the amount of blood regurgitating back into the left atrium, the greater the, regur the, the, the severity of the regurgitation. But you need some sort of objective data to quantify it. Okay? So we can look at the regurgitant volume and we can calculate the regurgitant volume and hence we can calculate the regurgitant fraction. Again, when you have, let's use mitral regurgitation. When you have mitral regurgitation, blood is flowing back into the left atrium and mixing with the normal amount of blood that would flow into the left atrium. So when in diastole, when the mitral valve opens, the blood flowing across the mitral valve is going to be mixed with the regurgitant volume plus the regular volume. Remember what we said, in a closed system, the flow is usually pretty much the same all over the place, unless you have a leak. So, so when you look at mitral regurgitation, it, 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 
satisfy the criteria of a leak, a backflow. If the aortic valve flow is normal or the left ventricular flow tract flow is normal and you don't have any significant aortic insufficiency, then you can assume that the flow across the left ventricular flow tract would be the normal flow. The flow, the forward flow now across the mitral valve in diastole is an abnormal flow which comprise of normal flow plus regurgitant flow or regurgitant volume. Normal volume plus regurgitant volume. So to get the regurgitant volume, if you can calculate the flow going across the mitral valve in diastole and you subtract from that the flow going across the left ventricular flow track, then the difference is the regurgitant volume. But you have to understand the concept that when you have regurgitation, and we let's use mitral regurgitation, you're going to get back flow of blood from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. So the left atrium is now going to contain an additional amount of blood, which is equal to the regurgitant volume. The normal volume that would be flowing or the normal volume that would be flowing from the left atrium into the left ventricle across the mitral valve would be similar to the flow across the left ventricular flow track. But because you have the mitral regurgitation, that regurgitant volume, it's going to be more. So if you calculate the flow across the mitral valve, and from that you subtract the flow across the left ventricular flow track, the difference is what we call the regurgitant volume. Using the same principle that flow is equal to cross-sectional area times TVI, you can calculate that flow. Because the flow, let's look at the mitral valve. The flow across the mitral valve, if you can calculate the mitral valve area, and you can do that, and if you multiply the mitral valve area times the TVI across the mitral valve, all you do, you, you, you look at the mitral inflow, your E and your A, and you just uh, do planimetry. You, 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 you do the envelope and you get your TVI. If you multiply them, that's the flow across the mitral valve. But that flow across the mitral valve comprises of the normal flow plus the regurgitant volume. The normal flow, if you that would occur across the mitral valve if you didn't have mitral regurgitation would be the same flow that would flow across the left ventricular flow track. And we know the flow across the left ventricular flow track is e flow is equal to area times TVI. So that's equal to the area of the left ventricular flow track times the TVI of the left ventricular flow track. So the regurgitant volume is equal to the flow across the mitral valve or the forward uh, forward flow, okay? So we're looking at the mitral valve, but it's, it's the same concept for any regurgitation. So if you can calculate the flow across the mitral valve, flow is equal to cross-sectional area times TVI. And if you subtract the systemic flow, Okay, so you can calculate the flow across left ventricular flow track. Okay, and if you, the difference is the regurgitant volume. To get the regurgitant fraction now, you put the regurgitant volume over the forward flow across the regurgitant uh, valve. And this is regurgitant fraction. Okay, we will do some uh, exercise to. to, to further uh, stress the, uh, clarify the, the concept, okay? All right.
Now, there's a, the, 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 there's a concept we call PISO, uh, which stands for Proximal Isovelocity Surface Area. And we, we use this because this is more standardized and this is more accurate. And it, it, we can get from this regurgitant volume, regurgitant fraction, and what we call regurgitant orifice area. So try and understand the concept that if you're going to quantify regurgitation, you're going to say how severe the regurgitation is. You can look at the volume because if more blood is going backwards, then you have more regurgitation. So regurgitant volume, you can look at the volume. So you can calculate the volume, and the greater the volume, the greater the severity of the regurgitation. And hence, the same thing. You can look at regurgitant fraction, the same thing. So with regurgitant fraction, the greater the fraction, the, the greater the regurgitation, and hence, the, 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 the 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 uh, the greater the, the the severity of the regurgitation. Also, we're going to introduce a new concept: the uh, regurgitant orifice area. So you have to sort of conceptualize this, sort of think about it. The greater the regurgitation, the more blood you have going backwards. The area that the blood is flowing backwards is going to be larger, OK? The greater the regurgitation, that potential area, so regurgitant orifice area is actually a potential area, which can get smaller or larger depending on the amount of regurgitation you have. So the, the greater the regurgitation, the greater the regurgitant orifice area. Okay? So, it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's, if you want to say, it's like if, if it's a hose, and you can, if you make the, the nozzle and the hose, you can vary the nozzle. You can make it small, you can make it large. And if you have a, a, a lot of flow across, uh, I mean, through the hose, if you make the nozzle orifice larger, then you get more fluid or water flowing out of the hose. Okay, so that is a concept. But with PISO, and of course, PISO is an acronym, stands for Proximal Isovelocity Surface Area. So let's use mitral regurgitation to, to explain this concept, okay? So when you have mitral regurgitation, you have blood flowing from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. So blood is gushing backwards. So this is your regurgitation, okay? So the blood is going backwards into the left atrium. So this is blood flowing back into the left atrium. On the ventricular side of the mitral valve, you get these hemispheric shells, okay? And this is what we call flow convergence, okay? So th this now is pure fluid, uh, is, is, is pure hydraulics, you know, it, it, it's uh, the physics of fluid. So when you have regurgitation across an orifice, so, you know, fluid, but we, you know, we're talking about blood, but when you have regurgitation, say across a mitral valve, this is regurgitation, this is in the left atrium, and the ventricular side, you're going to have a series of hemispheric shells, okay? And this is what we call the proximal isovelocity surface area. All the velocity al along the surface is the same. 
That's why it's called isovelocity. Iso means same surface area. So all the velocity along this hemisphere is the same. Okay? It's a hemisphere. It's not, it's not, it's not a sphere. It's a hemisphere. Okay. What hydraulics have shown us is that the flow at pizza is the same thing as the regurgitant flow using the um the the the, the conservation of mass the, the the regurgitant flow is going to be the same as the flow the, the flow at pizza or the convergent flow or the flow convergence again when you have let's use mitral regurgitation when you have mitral regurgitation Blood is flowing from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. So this is your regurgitant uh, flow. On the ventricular side of the mitral valve, you're going to have a series of hemispheric shells. That's just what happens. Okay? So it's not someone developed the concept. This is what actually happens. So these are a series of hemispheric shells. And all along the surface of the hemisphere, the velocity of the flow is the same. Okay? And this is the uh, radius of the hemispheric, hemispheric shell. It has been shown that the flow, the regurgitant flow, is the same as the, 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 flow, the, the flow at pizza. Okay? So, again, so we're going to come back to the same concept. Flow is equal to cross-sectional area times velocity. Flow is equal to cross-sectional area times velocity. So the regurgitant flow is equal to the cross-sectional area, okay, times the, re the regurgitant um, velocity. So, um, so let's just so this so flow is equal so they sort of simplify let me just write this out so that you don't get confused you can't get confused all right so if you're talking about the regurgitant flow okay flow is equal to so the regurgitant flow down here let's call that r regurgitant flow r down here is equal to area times velocity. But the area we're talking about is this potential area right here that you have the regurgitation occurring through. Just like you get the nozzle in the hose and you can vary the diameter, okay? The larger the diameter, the more fluid you have coming out. So this area here is, is, is what we call, this is the area we're interested in. I would call this the effective regurgitant orifice area. This area right there. So the regurgitant flow is equal to the area, which is the effective regurgitant orifice area, EROA. times the regurgitant velocity. And let's call that regurgitant velocity VR. Okay? So again, the area we're talking about is this little potential area through which the blood is flowing back into the left atrium if we use in mitral regurgitation as our example. Okay? And that area can vary. The greater the, the regurgitation, the greater the area. The smaller the regurgitation, the smaller the area. So this regurgitant flow is equal to the flow at pizza. The flow at pizza, all right, call that, call it P for, for argument. Say the flow at pizza, so all flow we know is equal to the area. 
So the area of this hemisphere, er, the area of a hemisphere is 2 pi r squared. All right, so the a hemisphere is half of, a, half of a sphere. Okay, so the area of a hemisphere is 2 pi r squared. Okay. Again, flow is equal to the area times the velocity. And the velocity we're talking about is the ISO velocity, which is the same velocity on the surface. And this velocity is what we'll call VA. Okay. The velocity is called VA. So these two flow, these two flow is the same. Again, remember what we said before. If we know the EROA, we can determine how significant the regurgitation is. The greater the EROA, that is the effective regurgitant orifice area, the greater the regurgitation. So if we if we put these two uh, two these two uh, parameters together, we can solve for EROA because if we use in mitral regurgitation, then this regurgitant velocity is just the, the the velocity of the MR, and you get that when you do your C double. This you can get your regurgitant velocity and when you do your pizza, you can, you use, when you do it to your computer, you can measure the radius, okay? And you plug the radius in the equation. This VA is what actually what we call the alias in velocity. When you look at the side, you know, when you do your echo, you can adjust this alias in velocity. It's on the side of the, uh, your screen, and you can adjust it. Okay, a lot of people will adjust it to about 40 centimeters per second. So you just plug that in the equation. So the only unknown is your EROA, and you can calculate the EROA, and you can determine the severity of the regurgitation. We're gonna go over this when we do mitral regurgitation, but at least you are introduced to the, con uh, to the concept. And the important thing you have to remember when you have regurgitation, the regurgitant flow is equal to the flow at pizza, okay? The regurgitant flow is, just like any flow, is equal to the area, and in this case, the effective regurgitant orifice area times the regurgitant velocity. The flow at pizza is equal to the area, and is, we're talking about it's an hemisphere. So the area of an hemisphere is 2 pi r squared, and then the velocity we're talking about is the alias in velocity. And your, your, you, you adjust this on your machine. Okay? So this is one of the most accurate methods to determine uh, regurgitant volume, fraction, and EROA. So, all right. So, uh, this is supposed to be a hemisphere, not semicircle. Hemisphere. Okay. And then we'll just put it in. Okay. So when you rearrange the equation, your row is equal to that. Okay. So when you when you get your EROA, all right, so we didn't mean to do that. But um when you get your EROA, so when you get your EROA, that is your effective regurgitant orifice area. If you multiply the EROA by the TVI, and this is a TVI across the regurgitant um, uh, regurgitant vo uh, volume. So if you multiply the EROA times the TVI, you get the regurgitant volume. This is regurgitant volume, okay? 
And we use mitral regurgitation as, a, as an example. So when you have mitral regurgitation, you have backflow of blood from the LV, cross the mitral valve into the left atrium, and you get these envelopes, these mitral regurgitation envelopes. You can see that this velocity is close to six meters per second, okay? Uh, it's actually 5.54. So if you plug that into the equation, then you can calculate your, um, right, let's go back, so 5.54. So again, you get your, your, your um, illness in velocity by when you get your pizza, you just measure the, the radius. The illness in velocity is at the side of the machine. You just put it in, usually between 40 and 50. And the regurgitant volume, sorry, the regurgitant velocity is the 5.54 that you get right there. Okay, so if you look at the side, look right here. Okay, so these numbers are your, your alias in velocity. Okay, so these numbers are your alias in velocity. You can adjust it to get a nice hemisphere. Okay, so we're going to stop here and um,